Hey, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today in our series, uh, we're going to talk about adding relationships into our schedule. So this is where we left off last time. We added all of our activities into the WBS sections that we created. We uh, changed the activity IDs and stuff like that. So now what we want to do is start tying this stuff together. So um, what? So let, let's start with... Um, with building one. So there's no real right order to go when you're doing this stuff. Um, typically what I like to do is, you know, last time what we did was created, you know, added all of our activities here and then copied and pasted those over to building two. Um, really what I should have done was done building one first, added all of our relationships for that. And if there's other sections that are identical to our building one section, then what I'd want to do is add all of our relationships. Um, if I was doing a cost loaded schedule and there was even similar costs, I'd want to, I'd want, I look for um, areas of the schedule that you can replicate. And I want to add as much information and detail that I have for that specific section before moving on to the next, because then I can just copy that as a template and start pasting it over. Um, so keep that in mind with your own schedule. Um, but for this case, We'll, we'll go ahead and just um, add, add our relationships because it's a small schedule, it won't take very long. So I'm just gonna start here with building one, click on earthwork, and then down below in my details area, I can look for the relationships. So there's kind of the long, hard way of adding relationships is I would click on the activity, assign a successor relationship, and then I could uh, double click or click on foundations and click assign. And now all of a sudden, that is a successor relationship. And if I was to reschedule, so in P6, um, you can have it auto scheduled, but right now I, I, I have it manually scheduled. So uh, if you hover up here under schedule, you can click that and choose the current data date, which we're just using our September 1st data date, and I can reschedule that. And you'll notice now it reflects the new relationship that we added. So let's remove that. And I'm going to reschedule. Um, so what, what I want to do is I want to do earthwork, foundation, structure and envelope. So I'm going to show you a quicker way of adding relationships, which is, if you click on the first activity in the sequence, you hold your shift key, and you click the last activity in the sequence. And then you right click. So everything's highlighted from top to bottom. And then you right click and you say link activities. And what that's done is if I click my first one, I see it linked it to foundations. Foundations got linked to structure. So it linked the activities together in the order that I was highlighted. So that's one shortcut. The other shortcut is let's do, let's go to building two, which has no relationships. And I click on earthwork. If I hold my control key and I click in the order that I want um, the activities linked together, which in this case it is top to bottom. But say for instance, um, say for instance we were, uh, you know, sorted by the original duration. So say I wanted to do earthwork, and now in, that's the first activity in my sequence. I hold my control key down. While I'm holding that, I click in the sequence that I want the activities linked in. So I go earthwork foundations, structure, envelope, roofing, interior. And then I right click and I say link activities. And now you'll notice if I click on earthwork, I can do, I can go to the successor, which is foundations, structure, envelope, roofing, and interior fit out. So that's pretty neat. Um, so all of that got linked together how I wanted it. Um, so let's go and sort it again by our activity ID. And uh, let's just reschedule it so you can see um, see those, those relationships get added. So now we got building one and building two are all tied out. Building three is as easy as just clicking the top, holding my shift key, clicking the bottom, right click, link activities. And let's go ahead and schedule that again. And there is a shortcut key for the schedule. Rather than clicking there, you could just do F9. That's the hot key um, for, for getting that. Um, I use that quite a bit. 
Uh, building four, same thing. Link, building five, same thing. Link, let's go ahead and schedule those. Perfect, okay, so those are all scheduled out. Uh, let's go ahead and do our notice to proceed. Um, I'm gonna assign a successor. So I want that to kick off our prepare and submit. Uh, basically all of these items. So I'm just gonna highlight all of those and click assign. And you'll notice all of those got assigned as successors to my notice to proceed. And then I also wanna tie it to Earthwork because that's gonna be, uh, that's also gonna kick that off. So that is the successor. Then what I wanna do, so now Earthwork, all of my submittals are tied to my notice to proceed date, which kicks everything off. So then Earthwork, I wanted to go prepare and submit, review and approve. I don't have a fab and deliver, uh, so let's just tie it directly to our building one Earthwork. Let's go ahead and link that. And I'm gonna reschedule that. We'll see what that looks like. Um, and then let's do the same thing. So we have structural steel, start there, structural steel. And now this does have a fab and deliver structural steel. And let's have that drive our structure here. So let's go ahead and link that, reschedule that. Let's do our roofing, roofing, roofing. And let's have it drive our roofing down here, link that. All right, it's coming together here. So what, I, what I've noticed here is I'm, I'm always looking for things that don't have predecessors or successors. So let's add a column here under, I think it's under lists. So here we can add a column for predecessors and successors, apply that. And so we see all of this information coming together. But I notice here my earthwork for building two is blank. Building three is blank. So maybe in your situation, you wanna go earthwork building at building one first, and then building two, and then building three. So you wanna you want to sequence it by, by the trade. So let's click on earthwork, hold our control key. We'll go building two, building three, building four, and then building five. And let's link all those together. All right. Then we got our commissioning. So maybe that's gonna occur after, since these are all sequenced together. Now I haven't trade sequenced our interior fit out. So you can see like roofing and interior fit out, there's some overlap between, between all of these tasks. And if I look here, this sequence flows together, but, uh, and then it leaves interior fit out blank with no successor relationship. And that's reflected in the large float in uh, in each in that, in that sequence there. So I always like to make sure that we tie out our activities and make sure make sure everything has a successor relationship because that is going to fix our large float issue. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll tie interior fit out for building one to um, let's say commissioning. And then I can keep this window open and I can click interior fit out here and I'm still on commissioning so I can assign that. I can assign that. Click on that one, assign commissioning. And then our lastly, our building five. So let's go ahead and reschedule that, see what that looks like. Um, so now I just need our final punch list here, which is um, which is writing our data date. So let's just go commissioning, and I'll just hold my control key to click on final punch, and then link those together. And look at that. So this is really coming together now. Um, so we need our building weather tight. So, I mean, in this schedule, it doesn't make sense, uh, you know, to have one milestone for building weather tight. So let's just tie it to our last, act, our, our last roofing activity for building five. So I want uh, the roofing activity down here to drive 
the, let's scroll to the very top. I want that to drive our building weather type. Okay. Let's reschedule. Go to the top. So here's our building weather type. And then I want substantial completion. And I want that to be driven by our final punch list. All right, substantial completion. Perfect. All right, so there is our construction schedule. Um, I guess a few things if you're uh, if you're wanting to maybe like get this ready to print or something like that. Let's get rid of these predecessor and successor columns. So columns, let's get rid of these guys, apply that. We'll drag this guy over to give ourselves a little more space over here. Um, right click on the timeline here, time scale. And what we can do is uh, using two lines. So I want at the top, I want the year. And then on the bottom, I want the month. So month and week is like, you can see it's just too crammed together. I'd rather give it a little more space. So let's go to the top here and say year, month, apply that. So it gives that a little more space. We can expand and collapse that. Um, maybe you don't like these black summary bars. I'm not a big fan of them. I just like focusing on the activities. So let's right click on here and do, uh, I think it's our bars. Let's click on our bars, scroll down. And I see that here's the black bar here. So let's uncheck that one. So uh, under the display column, uncheck summary. Let's apply that. That gets rid of our bars there. This is looking pretty good. So it, if you wanted to print it, you can go over here, print preview. Um, and then it, so right now it's just, you know, you have the table here and then you have the, uh, the timeline, the Gantt chart over here. So you can mess around with that, you know, like maybe these column spaces are too big. So we can come back and let's, we can drag these, get them a little bit smaller, go back to our print preview. So that, look, that looks a little bit better. I notice here though, it like cuts off the timeline. I'm like, oh man, I want to see all of my activities. Why is that timeline getting cut off? Well, what you can do is go up to here to page setup. And then we can say fit time scale to one page wide. So if I go ahead and apply that, now we're looking better. Maybe the data date is like too far off to the right. And you're like, oh, there's three months of empty space over here that I don't need. Let's, uh, let's change that. So let's go to our options or sorry, we go to page. Oh, I think I'm thinking of Microsoft project. <laughs> uh, what we can do is just uh, slide this guy over. Let's go back here. Ah, oh, wait, how do you do that? One second. We're going to figure this out together here. I thought you go time scale. Oh, sorry. So you go to options, time scale start. And instead of May of 2023, let's do, um, I don't know, let's do July. July of 2023. Start the time scale there. And then we apply that. There you go. So um, yeah, you can use these, the time scale start and finish um, to control how much of this gray timeline that you're gonna include. Um, so yeah, you can mess around with it. I mean, we could spend a whole video on just just, <laughs> just print setups, but, um, and maybe I will, but that'll at least get you started. So yeah, we've, uh, we've finished our schedule and um, maybe we'll figure out some other things to add to it. Uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd, what you'd like to see a video on. All right, thanks so much.